Hey everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about mods, and we're going to talk about the top, well, put it this way, the first seven that I put in this rig, uh, pr most of them before we moved, and I may throw in an extra bonus. So, with that, let's get this rolling, let's see the intro. Hi buddy, welcome back. Uh, we're glad that you have stayed here for the this channel. I am so appreciative that so many of you have subscribed and liked our videos. Um, I now, I am blown away by the response with some of them. My last one got a ton of views and uh, I appreciate it from everybody. I'm glad that, uh, I really appreciate everybody, and I'm glad that you guys have have uh, really kind of stepped up and watched uh, my videos. I am doing this for you and for myself to document what I'm doing, how I get through these things. A lot of these mods we're going to talk about today are mods that I made because I'm handicapped. So I appreciate that you guys are watching these and hopefully that I can affect and help other people along the way. Let's get this thing started and go to mod number one. Hey, sorry about the uh, background noise, but I'm this campground right by the highway. But the uh, number one modification that I made, first one, was to put these solid steps on. It used to have the the regular folding steps here and for me it makes it a little tough to get up I also have one of the people at our harvest host made me this step to go underneath for when I have to extend that bottom up higher so it takes a bit to get up onto that first step so he made that for me which is awfully nice and then I also put on this handrail on there so the whole thing and it is hydraulic assisted so with the hydraulic assist I can get down here get the steps up and if you look they kind of go on their own up as they go which is nice the uh, handrail does fold in and doesn't get in the way and then also underneath I did buy the storage box and put that under here so that I can put a lot of the things that they were, it's for basically stuff for hitching up and unhitching. It looks terrible. It's because it, it caught the fifth wheel hitch when, and it, when I high hitched and it fell off and it went into this case, but the case is heavy duty. To install it, all you have to do is drill a few holes into the frame and then bolt it into the frame and it stays in there nice and tight. So that's the steps. And yes, they work pretty darn good. So I really like those and I think definitely a, um, a must have for people, especially in my situation. And the next thing I did was I took out the I took out the entertainment couch, the two seater couch with the power. Well, it didn't have power, but it had um, the footrest that came up and uh, cup rest in the middle. I took that out and I put in my lift chair and I put in another chair. And I'm looking at right now doing another modification in here, which I'll probably show you later. But this was pretty easy. All I had to do was take the the couch apart, and it came apart into about five pieces, and it went out the door. And then I just brought these in. So um, this makes it a little more comfortable sitting watching TV and also using my lift chair to uh, sleep and, and to get up, in and out and up and down with so that was the reason that I did this and that's one of the modifications I was at the Grand Design Rally and I went to the Moride um, booth 
And I was looking for this. This extends 200%. So this generator comes completely out. And I was going to buy it from them. And the guy says, don't buy it from here. And he whispers in my ear. He says, somebody's selling one down the way for 100 bucks." So I went down and got it, put it in. I had to shim it up to get it to work in here. But it works beautifully. The generator is, uh, I bought this at Harbor Freight. And it's quiet. Um, and it is very quiet and it runs for about eight hours or so so it works pretty good and it'll do a 30 amp plug so not too bad so with the slide and with the generator it makes things a little easier to kind of deal with my next things were the RV snap pads and I did do those from day one the steps from day one the snap pads from day one um, the snap pads have been great um, <laughs> I have lost one because I went into trying to turn out of a uh, harvest hose that was too tight. And the when the trailer swung, it just barely caught a ditch. And the ditch kind of pulled my, my snap pad off and I didn't notice. So I had to buy another one. But the snap pads are great. And if, as you can tell, sitting here on the ground in Florida... The snap pads hold just fine without burying themselves into the sandy dirt. So they work great. And my next one are my Furion backup cameras. And I bought the set of three. My rig was prepped for the one in the back. So all I had to do was take the cover off, screw it on, and plug it in. And that works fine. With these, it's easy. You just take your light out and where the light was you put a new one in and this one has the backup camera on it as you can see and so you see down both sides and you see down um, in the back and they're motion activated and they show when something happens and my Furion backup system runs from the monitor right there and then right next to it is the next one it's the TST tire pressure monitoring system. And I got enough. My truck is the 450, so it does not have the um, monitors on the truck. So I have six on the truck and four on the rig, and they show here. And I can tell you from personal experience that these things have been a lifesaver because when I got the rig, I, I didn't understand totally that because the tires had never been used and they were brand new, but that they were six years old, that there were, they were a problem. So what happened was on the first trip, we had two blowouts and I had to replace all the tires on the rig. Well, without this, we would have done a lot of damage. First one, we did no damage. Second one took out a little bit of the fender, but that was it. So thank goodness for the TST tire pressure monitoring system. And the next thing I got was the Garmin 1090, the RV GPS. Yeah, I love it. I have uh, put in the same address in that and in my one on the dash there. And the one on the dash has me try and go dirt roads and weird things and when I'm in you know when you go to campgrounds and they're they're not always in cities it takes you down some weird places this thing keeps you out of those situations now I don't know that I would have got the 10 I might have got the 8 the difference between the two is this is the 10 inch and it is pretty big but for us old people who are blind it's not bad and but I think I could have done just fine with the 8 so if I if it, I were advising you, I would get the 8 instead of the 10. I would definitely get the TST that's up there, and I would definitely get the Furion, cam Furion camera system. And uh, those things were things that I put in the rig and the truck. Well, that was my list of nine of the mods that I've made so far. I, haven't, I didn't count a couple. Number one, I've done the RV airflow. I'll get back to that. Because I've only put one in. I put the one in up here. I did not put the one in in the bedroom yet. I'm kind of testing it to see if it really does what it's supposed to do. 
So far, I don't know because my um, air conditioners were dirty, so I had somebody go up there and fix them, kind of get the dirt out and stuff. I don't think anybody had cleaned them since the day this thing was made. So I got those cleaned, and we're going to try it out, and it is going to get to 90 this week here in Florida. So also, there are some ones that were built in that when I got the unit, I think that you should have. Number one is an EMS. Everybody needs an EMS because a good example is the person who's right next to me right now in this campground. He just got his his um, motorhome. He is not very astute at the whole RVing thing. This is new to him and his wife. They're young. They got an EMS, the one that plugs into their cord. So they plugged in the cord, plugged it in to the last campground they were at. And all of a sudden it aired, aired out and it wouldn't work. And it kept happening, kept happening, and so they couldn't get electricity. Well, everybody around them said, oh, it's okay. Um, you know, we all get electricity through this the same way. Um, there's problems here in the park, blah, 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 blah. Don't ever listen to that, because here's what happened. They plugged it in, turned on their air conditioners, blew them both. Both air conditioning units went. So now he has to have a, he's got a 110 air conditioner in his window, and he plugs into the 30 and the 110 to keep his rig cool. It's not a good thing. It's going to cost him a lot of money. And the EMS, inexpensive, and it works. And I have a washer and dryer. <laughs> I would recommend that to anybody who wants to go full time. Washer and dryer is nice. Slow, yes. Plugged into 30, I can only use one at a time, or I blow breakers. And this place said that they had 50? <laughs> well, it didn't seem that they had 50, so I have 30. Uh, slide toppers. I'm not convinced slide toppers are the greatest thing in the world. Because what happens is a lot of gunk gets blown under the slide topper, can't get it off, it comes in your rig. So there's there's pros and cons. It does a pretty good job of keeping most of the stuff off. How come nobody told me about my crazy hair that I had from being outside in the wind? Thank you so much for that, you guys. So I went through the first half of this with crazy hair. I brushed my hair for this. Well... So those are the, the mods that I've made so far. Those are the things that I think are critical for you guys. TPMS, everybody should have it. EMS, everybody should have. Um, any of the other things, if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments. If you have a favorite one that I haven't done yet and that maybe I can get and try. So far, every one of these I've paid for myself. All of this I have done on my own. So... If you have one that you think would be good to try, let me know. And I can try it. If you have a favorite, let me know. If there were some that you want more information on, let me know. Just leave a comment. And I really appreciate you guys and all the, um, all the support I'm getting. I am enjoying this whole process. I am glad I did the things I did to make this rig more handicap accessible. The steps make it easier. My lift chair makes it easier. It's This is a perfect layout for me. There were a lot of other rigs that I could have gotten with a lot of different layouts. And I really like the Grand Design 390 Solitude. But it has two sets of steps. So with two sets of steps, it makes it even a little harder for me to get around. Getting up and down these three steps to get upstairs is not so bad to get to the bathroom. Um, oh, a couple of the things I didn't say about the mods I made. I did put in the Dometic um, taller toilet with the oblong bowl. Love it. I also put in a bidet in the toilet and love it. So there, there are a couple of things that I hadn't mentioned. Um, maybe I'll show you those in a, in a later video. So thank you very much. Remember, this is day one of the rest of your life. This is not a dress rehearsal. Today is the first day 
of the adventure that you're going to put yourself into. This is why I started this. We don't know how much longer the good Lord's going to give us, but with with what we do have, let's take advantage of it and do the things we want to do. And mine was travel the country, meet people, and all that is starting to come true. So thanks, you guys.